And promise when you promise, keep them promises. I if you're a content creator, social media socialite, influencer, or simply love to record current events, you need the joystick. The joystick is an essential tool for every type of digital content creator. It holds two or more mobile phones or tablets, allowing users to stream and record hands-free on multiple apps simultaneously. And it's lightweight and portable. For more information or to purchase your joystick today, visit our website at www.joystick.com. This is your new favorite internet radio, Power 108.9. Everybody. You want to answer that, don't you? I bet it's just killing you seeing the soft glow just inches away. Someone wants to tell you something or ask you something. Oh, come on, answer it already! Just so we're clear, that wasn't my fault. Next time, ignore your inner voice. Don't text and drive. Stay up on what's happening here at Power. You know We've got you new go. shows, I went, I, I went new guests, and, and new events to help us connect with the community. Exactly Follow us on Facebook in. and Instagram at Power 108.9. You can also go to Power1089.com to get all of the updated news and happenings here at Power. Thanks for listening. Oh my goodness, yes! Oh, my intro song is <laughs> find it though. Oh my God. I was like, it's just not my girl here. You never know. No, my fault. I'm I ain't got no fault. I am all, and I told you that. I'm all I left my charger in the car so I can't even go back. But you don't get start your own radio show or maybe you'd like to be a guest on one of our current shows you may even want to tell us what a great job we're doing or how we can do better simple solution email any requests bookings or suggestions to power 108.9 at gmail.com that's p-o-w-e-r 108 period nine now let's get you back to the show Yo, it's Michael McFadden for our friends over at Credit Building Professionals. You know what they do? They help their clients achieve better credit. How? Late payments, fraud, liens, charge-offs.
student loans. They do it all. Get results in 30 to 90 days, and it's very simple to contact them. Hit them up on their website, creditbuildingprofessionals.com, or give them a call, 678 678- 447-2012. Once again, 678-447-2012. Tell them you heard it on Power 108.9. What up, Credit Crit? Yeah, I get it. Hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Chocolate Tangerine, where we give it to you sweet and juicy. I'm your host, Tanjanika, and we are covering all things cannabis, culture, and commerce on this channel. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you share this out with your friends, your family, your co-workers, everybody. Get everybody on the mic so we can be on the same page. I'm so excited for you guys to be here this evening because we got a dynamic special guest in the building. I got to tell you all about it. So make sure you keep it locked right here to Chocolate Tangerine on Power 108.9. The joystick is an essential tool for every type of digital content creator. It holds two or more mobile phones or tablets, allowing users to stream and record hands-free on multiple apps simultaneously. And it's lightweight and portable. For more information or to purchase your joystick today, visit our website at www.joystick.com. And we're back. Thank you guys for joining us on Chocolate Tangerine, where we give it to you sweet and juicy on Power 108.9. So tonight we have a special guest. I can't wait to tell you all about it. But the first portion of this show is sponsored by Sealy by Design. So thank you so much to our sponsors. Sealy by Design is an aquaceutical. If you guys don't know what that is, that is water therapy. It is CBD and CBG infused alkaline water. So get into that. They have four different products that you can choose from right now. They have a pain relief, one for anxiety, one for energy, and one for sleep. So if you are dealing with any of those issues, make sure you hit up Sealy by Design or contact your girl and I got your link um, for you. So I also want to tell you guys some brand new news in these cannabis streets. I want to tell you what's going on. Um, First of all, did you guys know that a man died in D.C. jail hours after being arrested for weed? Did we hear about that yet? Wow. So Jamal Bird, he was arrested on September 30th for selling cannabis in a legalized state. Um, Apparently, he didn't have a license. You know how it goes. So he was arrested, and he was located in the basement of the D.C. police headquarters. And on October 1st, he was discovered unresponsive in his cell. Literally, no one has any answers for his family. No one knows what happened, why it happened, or why he was even arrested. But he was pronounced dead at 1.15 p.m., seven hours after he was arrested. It's been almost two months, and there are still no answers. And just so happened that Jamal was actually on his way to job training program when he was arrested so had his whole life in front of him and this is what happened so we got to get better guys this is unacceptable so say his name Jamal Bird and let's keep um let's keep that in our minds okay so I want to tell you guys about our guests every time I come in here I bring y'all somebody special like don't act like my guests don't be lit like every time so tonight I got two of the most amazing women that I know Okay, in the building with us, starting with our first guest, who is Veronica Taylor. If y'all don't know who she is, you absolutely will after this episode, okay? She is somebody to know. She is a visionary leader. She's an entrepreneur, an advisor based in Atlanta, Georgia, and she has worked for uh, Fortune 500 organizations as IT professional. She has done some of everything. Let me tell you, some data analysis, process improvement analysis, human capital management professional. We're going to have to find out what that is because I looked at that word and, you know, I just was like, what is that? Like, I want to be a part of that, okay? And so she's also a motivational speaker. She travels the world. She's volunteered for so many non for profit organizations, political organizations, and sports leagues. 
She has garnered a vast portfolio. She is somebody to be reckoned with. But she's here tonight to promote her four CBD dispensaries that she has right now and growing. Okay? Four and growing. You have no idea her story, but you will tonight. So please, everybody, welcome Veronica Taylor to the building. Hello, hello, hello. I'm super excited to be here tonight. <laughs> I am so excited that you're here tonight with us because... Um, we met recently, yes, like we last did. week. Yes, like, we did. Like literally, we just met. Uh, shout out to Richard. Richard gets it on Instagram. He is the man in these streets. High key genius too. Absolutely. Like found out he's brilliant in the mind. So so grateful to know him. But Richard invited me somewhere. Actually, matter of fact, Richard had an event that day. I went to his event just random, and he was like, "I'm on my way to a dispensary opening." I was like, "What? Here in Georgia? What? Oh no, no, I got to be a part of that. Where is it? Like, what's the address? <laughs> Let me follow you out there. Whole time." had plans that night canceled everything just wow. shut everything down like i need to be a part of this so i get out there and the location is beautiful everything is dope the vibe is amazing Thank it's a you. great energy in there so please veronica please tell them about you let's start with you before we get to the dispensary opening where did you come from where did I come from? Well, I came from Indianapolis, Indiana. Go Colts! Okay. By way of California, um, we lived in California quite some time back in the '70s and the '80s. Did some of this, that, and the other, and then I decided, mm, gotta leave this place. Okay. It was amazing, but um, due to health reasons with my husband, he wanted to go back to Indiana, much snow and all that good stuff. And so, um, my life changed a little bit and I decided mm, I'm going south. So I came to Atlanta and I've been here now about 32 years. <laughs> we'll take you. You are, listen, 32 years. I know people been here two months and be like, I'm from Atlanta. Like, hold up. Stop it. Stop it, I say. Okay. So yes, that yes. is awesome. Okay. So you came down here and now that you're here, this is home. This is headquarters. This is headquarters. Okay. Perfect. Yes. So let's fast forward to, um, what is the what? First of all, human capital management. Let's just let's just start there. Okay, so I've had lots of opportunities while I was here. I've worked for every major Fortune 500 company here in Atlanta, and the last go round, uh, I worked with uh, human capital management on the IT side, but on. You know, be a, being able to do that whole realm is more so dealing with hiring people, making sure that they have all of the nuts and bolts they need to work, and then getting them ready for retirement. So human capital kind of centers around all of that and, nice. and, and, uh, and not all in between. So you meet a lot of people doing that, that job. Absolutely. Okay. I travel a lot. Yes. I believe it. Okay, and so that traveling and, and that experience um, pivoted you over into cannabis. How? Well, I have a wonderful son, and he came up with this idea last year because he found out that the state of Michigan had just went legal. My son has always wanted to be in – he's – been in that business here and there and everywhere. Of course. Some of it I didn't know. <laughs> but when I did come up, he came up with this idea. He brought it to me and said, you know what? I want to grow and let's do it because it's legal in Michigan. We're right next door to Indiana, which is where he lives. So we decided, okay, we're going to give it a try. I've always been in, in that world um, as a recreational participant. Shout enjoying, out to you. Thank you. It. Thank you for saying that. Like that, I, I don't want to gloss over that because that matters. Yes, you are um, a beautiful, seasoned, <clears throat> I'll say seasoned black woman. And Thank to you. admit that, yes. you know, publicly, that's Absolutely. a big deal. And, and I do it because I want people to recognize that marijuana never hurt anybody. Ever. Never, ever, ever, ever hurt anybody. Anyone. So I have no qualms with saying that I do partake. And enjoy it. So my son came up with this idea and, and we started out with three partners and we said, OK, how do we do it? And we knew at that time because of the way uh, Michigan had 
put their regulatory process in place. It was going to be very, very, very expensive. I mean, in the million dollar arena. And we knew we did not have that type of capital to get started the way we wanted to. So we fast forwarded to this year. Um, we decided let's go check out the West Coast and see what they're doing. So we went to a lot of different dispensaries. So you went on a tour. We went on a tour. Nice. Yes, we did. So you didn't come in this blindly. You no. went and you put forth the effort. We to did a lot of study. Nice. Because we knew that we had to do it right the first time. We don't want to step into anything and, and have to, you know, say, oh, we failed because I'm not into failing anything that I do. I've had multiple businesses here and there and everywhere. And I've always wanted to be successful in it. And because my son brought this to me, I said, we're, we're going to be successful no matter what. So um, we traveled to the West Coast and we, we saw how some dispensaries were set up, how they were working. And we put our action into play by saying, yeah, we want to do this. No, we don't want to do this. And then we found out that Vegas has a marijuana conference every year. So my whole team and I decided to go to that conference. We spent a lot of money to do it, but all six of us went and we enjoyed Vegas marijuana style for three days. We went to a lot of different sessions. We met so many people. But the one thing out of that trip that I can say that was kind of disappointing to me was there were not a lot of people that looked like me there. And I wondered why that was, because black people have been all in the marijuana business forever. Legal, unlegal. There it is. I'm just saying it the way it is. But we did come back with a lot of uh, beneficial contacts that we were able to sit down and come back to the table and say, now we have a plan on how to get the funding we need to get our dispensaries going. And then we did it. So, no, we need to talk about the plan. What was the plan? (laughs) What said, okay, now I got this idea, right? And then now I'm in full execution mode as you sit here. What was that in between? Though? Okay, so my my nephew had come up with the name Billow last year. What does Billow mean? Billow means smoke. Okay. And my business partner came up with a really nice way to put that logo out there so that it really identified us with having the smoke in there. And when people see the sign Billow, they're like, are those L's or is that smoke? <laughs> mm, it's a little of both. Yes. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it. That's right. But most people, I, I ask people all the time, do you know what Billow means? And they go, nope. Nobody knows what it means, but it does mean smoke. So our brand is Billow Plus. Because the plus stands for the 420 with marijuana. It's a green cross. It's a green cross. Yes, it is. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so we came up with a name. Came up with a name. Okay. And so while we were out in Vegas, we decided to pitch it out there to see what kind of feedback, what kind of response that we were going to get. And it was amazing so did you have a business plan pitching we had a business plan you were ready when you went there yes we were already ready had the business plan set up absolutely you had to be prepared yes (laughs) (laughs) because we were ready you know all we needed was the funding so we came back home and we had eight people contact us and i was like are you kidding me eight people they want to give me money And they gave me money. Yes, they did. (laughs) Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And so we have um, we have a partnership video that we showed a lot of people while we were out there. And that's how we were able to get them interested. And we went out there. We had our Billow shirts on. People were like, what? Y'all was representing like y'all already was in business. we, We were. We I absolutely love it. were. I love it. And since then, it has just been an amazing, amazing story for um, people to see. Did you really do that in this short period of time? Yes, we did. Since April, we have come up with an amazing partnership with uh, six individuals that have partnered with us to allow us to be able to open up these dispensaries. And since last week, I've opened up one in Charlotte. The week before, we opened up one in Gwinnett County. 
<laughs> Which is what, listen, we about to get into this because you don't just pop up with stores. Even like there is so much. I'm so, I'm so excited about this. Y'all have no idea. And when we come back, guys, so we're going to talk to Veronica more about Billow Plus. We're going to talk, get all into it, the nitty gritty, the ups and the downs because I'm Absolutely. that's important to talk Absolutely. about. And we're going to bring our second guest on board when we come back. Make sure you keep it locked right here to Chocolate Tangerine on Power 108.9. It's Michael McFadden for our friends over at Credit Building Professionals. You know what they do? They help their clients achieve better credit. How? Late payments, fraud, liens, charge-offs, student loans. They do it all. Get results in 30 to 90 (laughs) days. It's very simple to contact. (laughs) Hit them up on their website, (laughs) creditbuildingprofessionals.com. Or give them a call. 678 Four four seven two zero one two. Once again, 678 447 2012. Tell them you heard it on Power 108.9. What up, Credit Crit? And we're back. Thank you guys for joining us on Chocolate Tangerine, where we give it to you sweet and juicy. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Nikita Todd and the Team Todd Realty Group, dedicated to helping people realize the dream of home ownership. For more information, please visit her website, teamtodrealtygroup.com, for more information, okay? And so, guys, this is a great show. Let me tell you, every time I talk to somebody, they won't. To open up a dispensary Okay So if you ain't tuned in Or if you are tuned in And you know somebody That wants a dispensary Make sure you share this out So that they can get The information um, From an actual Dispensary owner Okay So I want to talk to you guys Before we jump back Into the show I want to talk to you guys About some big Cannabis news That happened this week The House Judiciary Committee Just approved The Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment And Expungement Act It's called MORE That's right Big up Big up Okay they approved it 24 to 10. Yes. So what that means is it is now, and this was brought on by Representative Jerry Nadler, uh, Kamala, President-elect, mm-hmm. potentially, Kamala Harris, uh, Presidential-elect, potentially, Cory Booker, and Elizabeth Warren. So all of them got together. They real serious about cannabis. Yes, like, they, they not joking. Did y'all see last night Cory Booker was like, uh, Biden? Mm-hmm. I heard what you said. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> what this does, it removes marijuana from the schedule, uh, control, 
Controlled Substance Act, and it expunges criminal records for uh, nonviolent cannabis offenses. And so that's incredible because we have a lot of people, and we just talked about one that was just arrested who was, you know, who died in jail. So we have a lot of people that's been arrested for cannabis offenses, and it shouldn't be illegal in some states and legal in others. That makes absolutely no sense. And so what they're saying is that Republicans might not support it. So we'll be on the lookout for this. We'll keep you posted. I Listen, I'm a veteran. I've seen these bills come and go. So I, I'm neutral right now. We'll just see how it progressed. And it was a big major win. This was a big deal. So big up to them. So we're back. And we have another special guest in the building that who I literally so dear and near to my heart okay she's from Atlanta so that's why listen old Atlanta I'm talking about old Atlanta I don't know this new Atlanta but the old Atlanta I recognize and it's so familiar okay (laughs) and so (laughs) and so Miss Lisa Adeboye is who we have in the building thank you thank you thank you Tandy for having me love me some Lisa Adeboye we Mm. met randomly at uh, one of our secret locations we're not even gonna tell y'all where we are because don't worry about us (laughs) okay so we met and and literally, we hit it off instantly. Yes. And we had like five glasses of wine that night. Absolutely. And we just talked about everything. <laughs> in so, the world. Yes, we did. And she is now my sister, my mentor, my colleague, my business partner, everything. And so tell them a little bit about you, Miss Adeboye. Okay. Well, I'm Lisa Adeboye, and I have a couple of different uh, projects and things going on. So I have a business in the federal government contracting space. Um, in compliance and in program performance. Um, I also have a business in the marijuana space, in the cannabis space, I'll say, because both marijuana and hemp, um, in compliance. I started my business five years ago, um, and what I decided to do, I didn't want to miss the opportunity in the legal uh, legalized cannabis space. So I wondered, how can I get in this space? Like, what skills can I transition over and not miss this opportunity because I missed the oil boom. I wasn't here. I missed the gold rush. I wasn't here, but I was not going to miss. Just refuse. I'm refused not missing out on man another. Not at all. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? Um, so I decided to transition the skill set that I have day to day in corporate America as a compliance uh, officer, an expert. And so I incorporated my company. I put together my logo. I visualized what I wanted to do start talking to people. I told everybody that I met what I was doing and got my first client within a few months um, that was opening up an extraction business in Pueblo, Colorado. Um, and so we've been working together ever since. I have a couple of other clients in the whole compliance space um, and recently became a minority partner in that first client's extraction. We got to big up awesome. that. We cannot yes, walk past that. If my engineer was in here, we would clap that up, That's okay? Awesome. I don't know where he went, but... <laughs> Clap that up. <laughs> that big up yourself, That's okay? Yes, yes, yes. So, yes, so, yes. so, so break that down though. What? Because compliance is everything in it's cannabis. Everything. So tell them what that entails. So it's all about the regulations. It's all about adhering to the laws, the rules, the regulations. And you cannot have a successful business in the cannabis space. You'll get shut down if you're not compliant. And when I attended the big um, cannabis conference in Las Vegas, which was the, one of the biggest conferences I've ever seen, um, they focused that year on compliance. And if it, it's the linchpin or the foundation, really, of a successful business in this space. So it's, it's been good. I've met a lot of people, and a lot of people are beginning to understand how critical it is. It's the most important yeah. thing because unlike other businesses, sometimes, you know, if you're not compliant, you get a fine. You get, you know, this, you could go you to get jail. Shut down. You, you get, get, shut, down. You get yeah. shut down, and you could you go to jail. Down. And I'm talking about big companies, so they yeah. always talk about the smaller boutique um, operations that get shut down. And I'm talking about companies who have been in the space from the beginning, who have businesses and multiple, have companies and locations in multiple space, uh, multiple states, and have gotten shut down. That's right. And so, Veronica, going back to you, you're a multi-state operator. Yes, I am. So tell us about how you stay compliant with every state. Now, even though you're, you're in CBD, but every state is different with their laws and regulations. So how do you keep track of that? Well, the most part, I have a great team. 
And they're always looking. And one of my partner investors, he's very, very good at research. And so he'll be looking for anything new and he'll pass it along to us. And, and actually, I'm linked to a lot of different um, avenues on my phone. So in the morning, I'm looking to see what comes up new and then I share it. You know, if it's anything that we need to be aware of. Georgia, um, like I said, I was downtown with the legislature when um, Governor Kemp signed medical marijuana into law. So I was very familiar with the two bills that they passed. Mm -hmm. And so I've been, you know, been in communication with several people that keep me up to date on any changes that's being made in that arena. And as far as North Carolina, where my dispensary opened up this past Saturday, I have someone there that's keeping us abreast of what's changing there as well. So any of the new areas that we're going into, we've already done our legwork and we know exactly what we're getting into which our, our new um, dispensary will be opening up in Indiana very very shortly and that's where I'm from and the good thing is the Indi Indiana and Georgia laws are very very similar so we know what we're getting ourselves into. But in spite of Georgia um, you know having a law it's not very progressive as of yet so what would ma what made you pick like i know you've been here but what made you you have the opportunity to go anywhere oh, so what made you put one here in the heart of the bible belt where it's the like the most difficult in some cases to convince people that cannabis is good for you um i guess because i live here that was the the driving force and then uh, several of my partner investors live here. So when we positioned that um, strategy, most of them wanted to have their businesses where they live. Some of them didn't care where the dispensaries were. So it just depends on what we could actually get our hands on. And as far as the properties, I kid you not, I went to someone that had a vape shop and that was very nice and it was very large. And I thought that we might partner with them and um, something happened and we decided not to. And she told me, hey, there's a space right across the street. Why don't you go check it out? I went and checked it out and I fell in love with it. And that's where my shop is Look right now. That. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's just every opportunity happened just that way. And so um, the leasing company where I have the shop in Mableton, they have um, enormous properties all over Atlanta. And so one day I was in their office and I said, hey, do you have any properties over here in Gwinnett, which is where they were located at? And she goes, somebody just uh, canceled their lease. Mm. Why don't you go check it out? And that's where we opened up at two weeks ago. This is amazing. <laughs> Only since April. Only since this April. Is this, this is this almost is unheard blowing. of. You've mind opened blowing. multiple Seriously. shops yes. since April, and this is yes. the same year. It's, yes. it's still November. <laughs> it's, still, it's still 2019. Absolutely. Okay, so this, amazing. so Lisa, yes. this is totally amazing. different from what we know of, yes. of of old Atlanta like can you <laughs> did you imagine this happening did you see this the progression of coming from legal states like Colorado no. Nevada did you see that no and I'm and I'm still I'm not happy um, <laughs> because I've spent a lot I spent a lot of time out west as well mm -hmm. you know and in uh, Las Vegas you know Colorado California um, even Mississippi, Mississippi was one of the first uh, states that had a university that tested for the exactly. for the U.S. government. Exactly. Mississippi, I'm not saying anything bad. I love Mississippi. <laughs> they got the Mississippi, <laughs> yeah. <Absolutely. laughs> but you know, for the South, you know, I thought that Georgia was a little bit more progressive, um, but no, I'm I'm shocked where we are. But you know, I want us to go further for sure. And we had opportunities to. Um, partner with someone in Colorado but yeah. the the market was so saturated right. it is. there it's oversaturated you know, we were Absolutely. like well, no we don't want to do anything on the west coast right exactly we want to we want to be in our own backyard yes. because we knew the opportunity was here and we just had to step in because originally last year 
Um, I knew there was an awesome dispensary in Woodstock, and I started going to that place just to see how they were set up and Mm -hmm. talk to the owners, which are wonderful people. And um, I I had someone say, why don't you open up here in Holly Springs? And I said, no, it's just too hard to get up there. You know, I want to be somewhere close to where I Mm -hmm. can get to. And the opportunity just it was just amazing that we found the place in Mableton. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, the plaza that we are in is 99% African-American. Mm. And lit, too. Beautiful every, location. Every yeah, like, business beautiful. owner there is African-American. Where exactly? What, what's the address? The address is 1400 Veterans Memorial Highway, mm-hmm. Southeast okay. Mableton, Georgia. It is beautiful, guys. Both locations are amazing. Like you have a so how does that work? It's a standard look. Is Absolutely. that so all of them have to look? every every store looks identical. Mm. Okay. We are truly selling the Billow brand. Mm-hmm. Nice. And so if someone okay, so I wanna I wanna talk about I wanna keep talking about this. I wanna pivot to family because I think that's super important and we want to talk about that. But I also want to just know um if someone is interested in being a, becoming a partner, how does that work? I would ask them to go and check out billowplus.com. We have a partner link at the top on the right hand side. Click on that link. You'll see a video that's about four minutes long. Check the video out and then give us a shout and we'll see how we can get this partnership going because we are always looking for more partners. Nice. And where do you... Okay, so when we come back, I want to talk about where you want to expand to next. Absolutely. And then I really want to get into family and legacy because I'm super interested in you guys' opinion about all of this. So make sure you keep it locked right here to Chocolate Tangerine on Power 108.9. So, That whatever you put in, that's the equity you get out. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. Stock is a wonderful um, Caucasian lady and her husband, and they actually opened up last year in October. When they opened up, they sold everything they had in the store the first they day. Sold out. The first day. But they're partnered with their franchise, Tries for American Shaman. And you see the signs, American Shaman is tearing it up. They, we we considered them, mm-hmm. but their partnership, their franchise fees are ridiculous, mm-hmm. and you have to buy five thousand dollars worth of merchandise every month. Oh, right, we don't want that. Okay. We don't want that. Yeah, right. So mm-hmm. we didn't go with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I can. 
Um, what else did I need to talk about? No, yeah, I can. Yeah, no, this is good. You ready? Yep. And we're back, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us on Chocolate Sangerine, where we give it to you sweet and juicy. We cover everything, cannabis, culture, and commerce on this channel. So we are talking to our special guest in the building tonight. I also want to uh, tell you about this portion of the show. It's sponsored by Jane Green. If you guys want to know how to get into the cannabis industry, if you are interested in learning and getting the education right in the heart of your own home, we have three courses with Jane Green and the Georgia Cannabis Coalition. Do I Need CBD, The Hemp Contingency Plan, and The Georgia Cannabis Report. If you want to know what's going on in Georgia about the two bills that were passed, then you need to go to uh, bit.ly forward slash Jane Green Courses for more information. Jane is J-A-Y-N-G-R-E-E-N. Okay, so we're back with my special guest in the building tonight, Miss Veronica, Miss Lisa. And so we're talking about all things cannabis because these women are in the industry. They know what's going on from a legal standpoint and from um, a non, almost non-compassionate standpoint as well in a state that is quasi-legal. So we're talking about all things cannabis, CBD, and all of that. So I want to pivot because I'm really interested. I think this is super important to talk about family and legacy. Did you all have any opposition did, when you told people that you were entering into the cannabis industry? What were, their, what were the conversations like doing that? And I'll start with you, Veronica. So it's really funny that you asked that question. Um, one of my children is in healthcare and she has nothing to do with it because she's in healthcare. You know, and so as far as anybody else in my family, I was very, very um, reluctant to share because of the type of industry that we're in. I'm always trying to keep my family safe, keep my myself safe, keep my employees safe. So, you know, I tell people I have a juice business, which I do. <laughs> OK, so how does that. But when we're trying to. OK, let me ask you this thing, because that is awesome. So you tell people you have a juice business, right? When you know that cannabis and CBD on a federal level is legalized through the farm bill. So I just want to break down what that apprehension is to share something that's so amazing. Because it's still a, a, a huge stigma. And until we can educate, which is what we do every single day in each one of my stores, we have classes that we have once a month so that we can tell the consumer that it's okay. You don't have to be afraid, but I'm not afraid, but I do want to protect my family at all costs. I understand. And so Lisa, how about you? So it's really funny. <laughs> so in my other business in the federal government contracting space, it's a very conservative space, I would say, as it relates to cannabis. But it's somehow I disconnect from that. When I meet people, I tell them that I'm in the cannabis space. Now, maybe because of what I do, it's compliance. So it can feel a little gray when I say it. They're like, oh, you're keeping everybody straight and on task. But I found that I have been very forthcoming. And it's been amazing because I don't care where I am, what space I'm in. People are excited. They want to pull you to the side. They want to talk. They're calling you, telling you they want to connect you with somebody who's in the space. So to your point, I get it. You know, in some circles, and, and you think about, you know, you do have a responsibility to your family, right? And we are in a state where it's only quasi-legal. Absolutely. Um, so I do understand, but I do understand both sides of the coin. You know, I really, really do. I do yeah. as well. And so, I, so for me, and just sitting here, I'm getting so much wisdom from you both because I don't have children yet. Mm -hmm. And so I understand what I'm doing, I'm able to do as loudly as I'm doing it because I just have myself that I'm looking for mm -hmm. out for right now. I'm I'm conscious of that fact. I really am. And because I'm a veteran, I know my voice has to be heard. I don't care if nobody voice heard. Yeah. I actually fought for this. So right. you're going to listen to me right. and I'm going that's to force true. you to. And so that's how I'm able to understand my level of freedom mm -hmm. when it comes to this. And so let's talk about the risk that you're taking because you see the because you see the bigger picture Absolutely. what does it look like generations from now or you know what your legacy is potentially going to leave 
I would say this. I have a 16-year-old granddaughter that lives with me. And two weeks ago, um, I picked her up from band practice. And she, she knows what I do. And she said, I want to I wanna start a petition to send to President Trump. And I said, really? What's it going to be about? She said, I want to ask him why won't he legalize marijuana so mm. that you can have your business the way you want to. And that was the biggest eye opener for me because my granddaughter is listening to me and she wants my business to be successful and not have any roadblocks to being successful so I am sharing with my family what I'm doing they all know what I'm doing I'm very selective who I tell when I tell what circles I'm in because I travel all the time you know what I'm saying but I do want to protect them at all costs because we never know who we're going to come up against and there and there are people that have their own agendas. You know what I'm saying? And ulterior motives. And their ulterior motives. Absolutely. And so that was just just a huge, huge plus for me to know that I am sharing it with a 16 mm-hmm. year old and she recognizes the society that we live in and she knows that President Trump could do this with a petition with 32,000 signatures on it and she said she wanted to make it happen. That's beautiful. That mm-hmm. is beautiful. So I'm I'm we are all coming from the West Coast. We know different people in different circles on the West Coast. And I know third and fourth generation growers. Yeah. Like they grew up in the cannabis plants, you know, running around in the trees and stuff. So is that something that if given the opportunity, you guys would have, you ladies would have done with your family? Like if you're a 16 year old, I look at did. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. So, like I said, I lived in California back in the 70s and 80s. And I remember we had plants in our backyard that were over seven feet tall. Wow. Look at this. Okay. <laughs> I just want to smell it right now. Like, I wish I could just go back in time. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> it was the real skunk. Yeah. I, no, I believe. Yes. Tell it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was that is skunk. awesome. Absolutely. I'm so proud of this conversation because we don't have it openly. Yeah. Like it is not freely discussed. And you know, we got holidays coming up. People are hush hush. I know people who don't tell people that they own a dispensary or that they own really? like they and so me and Lisa talk <sighs> about this I'm all the just, time. We so open. We don't I care. Mean, like, we I just, mean, <laughs> like I'm like I'm a mother of three African American yes, men. Yes. Right? Yeah. And I'm even like they're entrepreneurs. They do film, but we're poising ourselves up to do media at the national level once it is legal. Absolutely. Like I have no problem. So I'm. Should I be worried? Right? Because I am very, very open about. I like. I'm very. Don't very ask open. me. I just told you. Yeah, I don't right. care. <laughs> you know, exactly. And it just amazed to me because. When I left corporate America, you know, I told people, my coworkers, mm-hmm. what I was getting into. And they were like, really? This is what you're going to do? Absolutely. This is what, I, what I'm going to do. A couple of them have reached out since I left. But they've not come to my dispensaries yet. But I've invited all of them to our grand openings. And I'm, I'm just amazed that they don't want to see it. Ah. Because it is something to see. Light bulb. Tell you me. know why? <laughs> Tell like, me. I got the light Tell bulb. Tell me, Lisa. <laughs> because, think about So I've been out on my own. I've had my own company really 10 years. And it's a whole different world when yes. you're out here as an entrepreneur. And so who you're meeting and, and, and bumping up against to and talking to, they're more open to ideas. Maybe that's it. Yes. Because think about it when you do work in corporate America. You know, it's almost like a fishbowl. You're in there with the same people. And Every so... Day. You don't really get a lot of new ideas. You know, it might be related to the business, but right. like outside of what you do every day, that might be it. That's it. You know, that's it. Maybe that's why I feel free enough to say that's, whatever. That's me. So yeah. let me tell y'all. Huh. So since I've been back, because be this is a great pivot to this, because mm-hmm. since I've been back in Georgia um, a couple months, it's just like I'm screaming from the rooftops, doing nothing different than I did on the West Coast. But it's so much apprehension. It's it's so much like, I can't believe you're talking about this. It's an energy put out that makes me feel like I should shrink back and not di- and be like you and not discuss. And it's so, ir- and I'm just like, no, I'm definitely going to talk about this. Y'all don't want to talk about it. But let me tell you about the endocannabinoid system. Right. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm telling them, I just want to tell everybody everything. And so, but fast forward, I go to an event the other night, right? The, the, the Greenbill Conference was in town. 
where President Barack Obama spoke. Yes. He was the oh, keynote yeah. speaker. Mm -hmm. So I go to a leadership conference and it's three black people in the room. All the white people want to know about what I'm doing. Oh, yes. They want to be <laughs> in on it. Mm -hmm. It's no hesitation. no hesitation. First time hearing about it or it's maybe second or third. Like, what? well, what can you do? So I'm opening up. So it's sustainability awards. I'm telling yes. them you can make hemp floors. Mm -hmm. You can make hemp Fiber everything. and fuel everything. everything. They was like, "Oh my goodness, I'll be the first person to have hemp flu linoleum floor." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Yeah, let's yes. talk about that." And mm -hmm. instantly was on it. Mm -hmm. Instantly talk. Oh, we can take this overseas right now. We can do. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to share. I, I, I know that I read Dashiba Dawson's Dashida, Dashida yes. Dawson's mm -hmm. book. Yes. And when she said. That whatever you do in your everyday life, you can, you can transfer it into this space. Yes. That's what it's really allowed me to start telling people, you know, you don't have to do this job the way you do it anymore mm -hmm. if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Because you can do this job in the marijuana space and make a whole lot more and money. And be so happy because be you can consume. So happy you won't you even be stressed to. out. Absolutely. And it just amazes me that so many people are still afraid. And I saw when I was doing my travels or on the West Coast, Every dispensary that I saw was owned by a female. That really made my heart wow. just overjoyed. That's awesome. Mm. Just overjoyed. Yeah. And that's when I share that, you know, who I am to people. You know, they see this This is a this is an African-American woman that owns these dispensaries. This is just truly amazing. Yeah. And I want to continue to open up as, as many as I can so that I can show people this. You can do this, too. This, it's not just for me. This mm -hmm. is for everybody. There is no respect of person in this. All you have to do is just sit down and quit being afraid. Just stop being fearful. <laughs> Literally everything you want is on the other side of fear, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. We have. So, Lisa, yes. I really want to talk about um, or both of you. Where do we see this going? Like, this is huge. <laughs> this is the biggest thing. This won't happen again for another 200 years is what we've been told. Yeah. And so we missed out. We talked about this. We missed out on everything else. Yeah. <laughs> so. I mean, look at the al alcohol industry. Absolutely. It's just going to be the same it's gonna thing. It's going to be the same. Nobody's going to be thinking about it. It's like, okay, yeah. yeah. You want it's, me to stop and pick up same. a six pack of joints? So, you right. know, right. Right. it's, it's going to be, be the, the same. same thing. And the thing of it is, if you go to Amsterdam, mm -hmm. come on now. Yeah, there's no restrictions. None. Right. <laughs> None. Is yeah. this this stuff was legal back in the 20s and 30s, people? Yes. You hear me? Mm -hmm. It was nothing but a pharmaceutical company that decided that they didn't want it anymore, mm -hmm. and they had somebody in their pocket, and they told them to stop, and they did. Yep. No, it was actually racism and greed. Exactly. <laughs> well, that too. It was definitely <laughs> racism. It was it was white people who did this. Okay, I just need yeah. everyone to okay. recognize okay. that. Okay. But, but, true. but truly, it's going to be a way of life yep. because just like you said, hemp, you can make everything out of hemp. Everything and everything with CBD. Right. You're going to have CBD in everything that you use from this day right. forward. So, guys, when we come back, we're going to talk to them about using cannabis in their personal lives. We're going to get into their business, <laughs> uh -oh. okay? So make sure you keep it locked right here. It's a Chocolate Sangerine on Power 108.9. crazy son said today dang i need to buy some of our products <laughs> i know right <laughs> what, 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 i forgot i do it every day <laughs> for the most part you know i buy it and i give stuff away to people because you know, it's tiny just situations that happen you know i'm always listening and they're coming to the store they're looking you know and i, I give stuff away because do you, I want to buy you wanted to try it yeah, yeah. Try. but and for the most part they're buying That's the best $5 you can spend. 
Philippines. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, okay, come on, let's go. Like we like. Cut it up one time. Hey, and we're back, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on Chocolate Tangerine. Listen, if you are just getting here, you missed it. Like, whatever. So just watch it over, okay? Make sure you rewatch it because. <laughs> yes. So, guys, we're going to be. Hey, what we gonna talk about is literally this right now. Let me tell you. So, <laughs> when we were off air, we were having some awesome conversations. <laughs> and I just want to get into their business and talk about their personal consumption use. Listen, I will be the first to say, I don't care. I miss THC. I miss quality THC mm -hmm. products that have been tested, that have great packaging, because I do buy with my eyes, just mm -hmm. like everyone else. I am used to a pleasant experience when I purchase it's never anything that makes me feel guilty or, you know, like I'm doing something wrong. I miss that. Mm -hmm. Is that your experience? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I say for me, the best I've bought so far was in Vegas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, we bought marijuana from so many dispensaries okay. in Colorado, and it was like, what is this stuff? Colorado, see, Colorado is not good. That. Like that. I, I don't was, understand you're that. You're right. They, I don't they were worse. That. They really? should. That's yep. what's going on. Really? That is really? what's going on. But okay. man, you could go to, to there's, <laughs> you could go to every corner in Vegas and find some good marijuana. They're phenomenal. <laughs> the shops there are phenomenal. phenomenal. They are absolutely. Mm -hmm. They really? were. They were. So hmm. what? So what are we personally taking it for? So for me, I did two tours in Iraq. PTSD, chronic pain. Just <clears throat> even just being around humans sometimes. I need to calm down. I need to be de-stressed. Yes. We're entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So what is your personal relationship with cannabis? I I like to just relax. For the most part, I don't smoke it every day. Okay. I I can't smoke it every day okay. because I'm just too busy. I know that's right. You know, but I just love to be able to relax and have a glass of wine and, and smoke a joint. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I consume both CBD and THC um, to relax um, because I'm in meetings and after the meetings I need to de-stress. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about the human element. Mm -hmm. um, to chill, I love to laugh, to chill and relax on the weekend. Um, also you talked about for sex, I understand that for young women who are out there, you know, sometimes they have challenges relaxing. Uh. So it's perfect. It's perfect for relaxing in any aspect, but for sex and preparing, you know, getting yourself chilled out, releasing the problems of the day, you know. Can you just like literally I'm always in my head. I yes. forgot to send this email. Right. I forgot to do this and I need to do th and during sex when I'm supposed to be right. pleasure, that is not the time. Exactly. That you're supposed, you're <laughs> supposed to be one hundred now present. Okay. I need to yeah. be right yeah. here in this space. Okay. <laughs> so and then but you have moms who yes. are thinking about the kids, right. thinking about things, you know, I gotta do this tomorrow. Yes. I got I didn't forgot to cook this. Mm -hmm. I, this project. So it's so helpful when it comes to being present. Present. Yes, it does. Even conversations. Absolutely. You know, you're like more engaging. You're more generous. Um, um, we, makes was, you laugh. Yeah, I was sitting down with my sons earlier today, and they were saying we were watching a movie, and uh, they were consuming cannabis in the movie. And he was like, "Isn't it amazing how quickly people become friends when they're consuming cannabis?" In that sense, yeah. almost all my friends. Because it just, yeah, it just makes you relax. And I open. can't, I can't mm. say that because I don't have any friends that smoke marijuana. It Ooh. be like that. It is. I get to do it all by myself. <laughs> it be like that. Okay, so listen, but let me ask y'all this though. Okay, so so 
elderly like they're the fastest oh growing demographic oh of people 70 year olds of course 80 year olds they smoke so much marijuana <laughs> it's ridiculous but they come from the era so they, you know they right. come from the era that's and right. it was never anything bad yeah. for not, them not at all and word on the street they be having all the sex too <laughs> <laughs> I just want to like be is. getting it at <laughs> 70. Like it like I, I know that's right. <laughs> that's all I want. And cannabis will let us do, do that, it. ladies. Absolutely. That will be the way that we can make that happen. So let's talk about, um, you know, where we see ourselves in like 10 years. Hmm. Where do we see that? In 10 years, someone has bought Bill O Plus. Speak it. And I'm really enjoying life. Mm. Yeah. Same my thing. my um my leadership coach has me doing a vision plan and I've done my vision plan and what it is for me is to there's a couple of places that I've never been that I want to go to and then I want to be able to really spend some quality time with my great grandchildren mm-hmm. and currently I have five great grandchildren wow. and I just want to be able to spend some quality time doing things with them you know that I did with my grandchildren. Mm-hmm. And that's what my future looks like. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What about you, Lisa? Yeah, I just want to leave a legacy for my children, generational wealth. I'm hanging up my shoes in about five years and sitting on the beach and staring at the ocean. I know that's That's right. That's exactly right. (laughs) Oh, I love that. And so for me, I am so focused on cannabis tourism. I am so focused on the idea of people leaving their home, packing their bags, and traveling, you know, for quality cannabis mm-hmm. to to experience cannabis right. in all its forms whether it's infused yoga infused meditation infused massages you go into the gift shop at the hotel and you're purchasing right there right. like that's what i see for us in mm-hmm. the future and then owning like eight hotels on different islands Absolutely. you know like I, that's what i see for mm-hmm. myself so please ladies tell them where they can find you because they want to get in touch with you tell them billoplus.com inspirehealth.com that's right so this has been another dope episode if you think so please share this out it's never too late I appreciate you as always you could have been absolutely anywhere in the world but you decided to spend your evening with us and we thank you for that this has been the best and this and I am your host Tanjanika I am an international best selling author I am the CEO of Jane Green and I'm the chairwoman of the Georgia Cannabis Coalition so I'm that too okay (laughs) I appreciate you for joining us and I will see you back here next time on Chocolate with Sandrine on Power 108.9. You gotta follow me inside this journey. You never thought you'd find a thing so worthy. Wherever you go, you won't get it like this. No, from a newbie, a queen, a cannabis. I get 50, 50, 50, we get